But just giving France a further 63 million quid, it doesn't solve anything, does it? Well, it might stop um, a percentage of these people coming, but to stop them coming altogether, you have to destroy the business model of the people smugglers, and that is that they have to um, be reminded that if people pay them whatever it is, 5,000 euros, um, that uh, they won't be able to get those people to England. Um, and at the moment, they can. And not only can they get them to England, but um, these people can then claim asylum and they're tutored to make particular types of claims. To game the system. Game yeah. the system. That's yeah. exactly what they do. Yeah. They game the system. And because of the way the laws are written in the UK, um, they get to stay. So something like 70 percent of applications for asylum in the UK are accepted by the government, whereas the EU average is about 35%. Yeah. That reflects the differences in the law. So there are several things they need to do. One is they need to change the laws, um, and they've talked about that, but they need to get the legislation through So let's just parliament. be clear on, on this. We're, we're, we're dealing with the Modern Slavery Act, what, what, another one of Mrs May's poison pills, where people who come across in dinghies making the Albanian gang symbol, but then claim they've been trafficked into the country. Yeah, they so claim that, the gangs that they yeah, have yeah. paid, yeah, yeah. they have paid the gangs yeah, to bring yeah, them yeah, to the yeah, UK. I mean, they yeah. claim that they are now uh, victims <laughs> of modern slavery. I know, honestly, I mean, I, I hate to say it because politicians are loath to do so, but it's an absolute racket, the whole thing. It is a racket. These are not people who are escaping persecution within the meaning of the 1951 Refugee Convention. They are people who are gaming the system to get into the UK illegally. It's as simple no, as that. No, absolutely. We've got that. We've got the Human Rights Act, 1998, which of course incorporated ECHR mm. into British law. Here's my worry. Even if we change British parliamentary acts, our judges will always defer to what the ECHR have to say. Isn't the truth of it the really get to the heart of that? I mean, no, don't forget, you know, with the Rwanda policy that you worked on, it was a judge in Strasbourg in the end yeah. who stopped. Well, it, you know, that's what happened. Stopped it so far. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, but I mean, shouldn't we really be addressing that bigger issue of ECHR? Uh, yes, and so Dominic Raab is the Justice Secretary before and in his yeah. first iteration and now is talking about a Bill of Rights, um, a Bill of Rights which would clarify that um, UK courts um, uh, had precedence over um, judgments but, but, of the but, European Court of Human Rights. Whether that would work... It, but we've signed whether, a treaty. We've signed an international treaty which right. would supersede. So the ultimate, the ultimate um, thing to do, which I think would be very brave, mm. would be to withdraw altogether from the Convention. And there should be some debate about that about whether um, that is the only alternative. It's a reasonable thing for the British government to stay, say it will stop these criminal gangs from gaming the immigration system and destroying Britain's immigration policy. It is a reasonable thing to say they must be able to do that. Um, and um, therefore the solutions have to be um, permissible. Otherwise, in the end, maybe you do have to withdraw from the convention.